Hey everyone, it's Alfred. Um, welcome back to Game of Loathing. I uh, fully intended to record more Morrowind today, but I'm honestly really having a nice time with KOL. I, I mean, you know, it's a good game, but I'm just having a nice, fun time with it. So, uh, we're going to keep running around Cobb's Knob. And now we actually have more areas to go to here. So we have Degrassi Knoll, the Misspelled Cemetery, and back to Cobb's Knob. As you near Cobb's Knob, your heart leaps as you find what you think is a small plastic treasure chest. Then your heart sinks as you realize it's actually just a lunchbox. Then your heart leaps again as you recognize an opportunity to do the right thing by returning its lunchbox to its rightful owner. Then your heart sinks again as you look around for a while but can't find them. And then your heart leaps again as you experience some kind of cardiac abnormality. You should really see a doctor about that. Maybe the doctor will know whose lunchbox this is. Knob Golem Guard. Nice. I shouldn't just burn adventures, to be honest. I dropped my skeleton bone on my groin. What do you missed me? I got a fire guy though. I could honestly just do this off camera, but I just started. Um. Oh yeah, now we can go to uh, Speak Raven Manor. Hell yeah! So, um, we're gonna go to the Honey Kitchen. You're fighting a demonic ice box. This is an ordinary garden variety ice box. Wait a second, who keeps ice boxes in a garden? That differs from some ordinary garden variety ice boxes. Seriously though, in one important way. This one seems to develop some sort of infernal portal inside that is causing it to do all manner of evil and malevolent things. Gets the jump on you. The refrigerator door opens and hits you on the head with its polished chrome handle. It gives you a bad case of chrome dome. You lose six hit points. You give it a knuckle sandwich, and since it still looks hungry, you fall up with, it with a club sandwich for 11 plus 2 plus 1 damage. Boink, kerblam, pow, oof. Freezer opens and a frozen turkey hits you in the face. This is the worst in the time you worked at the jet engine testing facility. You lose seven hit points, cold damage. Uh, it's important to mention that because I am a seal clover, and because I hail from the frigid north and wastes, I actually get cold resistance, but in later levels. Hey, all right. You hit it for a lot of damage. You win the fight. You manage to dig through a single drawer looking for the key, but the garbage disposal turns on, releasing a terrible, terrible smell. It just drives you back out of the hallway. To add insult to injury, you don't find the key, just a broken corkscrew. But you gain 14 meat, an ancient frozen dinner, and leftovers of indeterminate origin. Let's take a look at those. I guess they're not food. Recent items. Well, they are, I'm blocked. This is a frozen dinner so old, it's mostly just a tray of freezer burn. You briefly consider adopting freezer burn as your superhero name, but then decide against it. Alright, now I've got the lunchbox. Oh, we can use it. This is a simple black lunchbox. It's pretty boring compared to the ones you had a kid with Knight Rider, maybe Strawberry Shortcake on it. Unless you're too young to have had one of those, in which case, get off my lawn. Mostly combat item, interesting. Oh, it deals stench damage. This is a plastic container of leftovers so old you're afraid to even open it to see what's in it. You find yourself considering the value of the container, determining if it would be acceptable to just throw it away instead of washing it. I feel the hell out of that. I am, got these. Yeah. Yeah. Alright. Head back to the haunt kitchen. You're finding a zombie chef. I know what you're thinking. Zombie chef, eh? I bet he only knows how to cook brains. Well, Mr. or Miss Smarty Pants, I'll have you know this particularly this particular zombie chef was awarded the Diploma de Cuisine from Le Cordon Bleu Academy of Loathing, and he's a master of all manner of gourmet delicacies. The fact that everything he serves his brains is complete coincidence. He gets the jump on you. He gives your giblets a good ass scrape with a cheese grater. You yeah, damn it. Block him. Ugh. You give your opponent a nasty case of club elbow, by which I mean you club his elbow for 11 plus 2 plus 1 damage. Bonk, bam, zap, splat. He gives your arm a good scrape with a cheese grater. Hey, damn it. Ooh. It's actually pretty t uh, pretty close. You viciously bludgeon him, dealing a bunch of damage. You win the fight. 
You manage to dig through the, a single drawer looking for the key, but the constant demonic flames belching out of the oven results in the kitchen getting too hot for you. You have to get out of there. To add insult to injury, you don't find the key. Just have a pair of dice. 20 meat for seed brains and a bottle of cooking cherry. Uh, I'm going to go heal up, but I'm not going to rest because I want to save this stuff. Oh, yeah, I can't eat. Um, I filled up my adventures, as you can see here. Um, normally, I would just wait and save all my equipment, but like I did really want to just play some more, so I'll pop one of these. Cool. Actually, I'm just head back through there. You're fighting a paper towel geist. This is a roll of paper towels that appears to have been animated by the novel and spirit. It's durable, it's absorbent, and it's coming for you. But you get the jump on it. Attack with your skeleton bone. The paper towel guys repeatedly bounces up and down on your head. You'd think that wouldn't hurt too much, but you'd be wrong. Gee, seven hit points. All right. Garbage disposal turns on. We just find a pair of rusty pliers. We got strongness, magicalness, and smarm. You're fighting a scullery maid. Maid's job is to wash dishes, and it looks like she's been at it for a while. Talk about dishpan hands, wow. On the plus side, she's gleamingly white with a lemon fresh scent. We're gonna lunge smack her. Hey, all right, look at that. You manage to dig through a single drawer looking for the key. The garbage is supposed to turn itself on, releasing a terrible, terrible smell. Drives you back out to the hallway. You don't find the key, just a mask. Let's take a look around here, actually. Haunted library. Door's locked. A SS silverware drawer. This is a silverware drawer that has both developed free will and malice towards adventurers. Clouds of cutlery whirl menacingly above it as you approach. Just the jump on you. A fork hurtling towards you, which hits you and forks up your shoulder. You lose seven hit points. It slings a spoon and a butter knife at you, which hit you in your kidney and groin, respectively. Mm -hmm. Hey, all right. Hey, we got a muscle point. Nice. Um... This one open? You're fighting a man-eating plant. As you walk past a large, bulbous plant, inexplicably labeled Audrey 3, you hear a voice that swear, Psst, hey you. You look around, but don't see anyone. Hello? Who's there? Me, the plant. Feed me. Forget it. I don't talk to plants. Go synthesize or something. Photosynthesize, excuse me. The plant splits open, revealing a grinning toothy maw. Screw this wetty banter, it says, lunging at you. Uh, I'm sorry I'm not doing the voice for Audrey. Uh, it's actually not too late, but it is midnight. Bonk it. It sings about how it's a mean green mother from outer space, all while roping, whipping you with its ropey tendrils. You lose a bunch of hit points. All right. You paw at the ground like a bull, or like a bull seal, maybe, and lunge towards your foe, smacking it for 15, plus 5, plus 2, plus 1 damage. Whoa. All right. In the fight and gain 10 meat. Ooh, actually, let's head out of here for a sec. Go to the Brotherhood of Smackdown. And I think it's you guys? Yeah. All right. Okay, yeah. I'm going to get Wrath of the Wolverine. And that's all my meats. So. And I'm just going to check out what else is actually in here. I know that I actually really can't buy anything, but... Yeah, okay. Um, skills, here we go. So, I picked up a bunch of skills last time. I don't know if I went through these all. Blubber up. Um, this makes just gives you more moxie. I don't know how useful it is. Hibernate burns an adventure, but it fully fills up my health and gives me an effect called Well Rested. Um... Which is actually pretty all right. Seal clubbing frenzy just you know makes me buffer. Clobber is one MP now. Interesting. And then lunch smack does five bonus damage if it connects. Um, I don't know what it is, but in RPGs I usually like to get as many passive skills as I can, which I have here. Yeah, so all my smacks deal more cold damage. Oh, interesting. Okay. I forgot that I had gotten that already. So, yeah. Um, Otter gives me triple crit damage. This makes me regenerate health. I forgot I had that. That's good. 
Wrath of the Wolverine's new. You ever seen a Wolverine go after a herd of shrews? It's crazy. It just doesn't stop. It's like every shrew it takes down multiplies its desire to take down shrews. Anyway, you're like that, and also every enemy looks like a shrew to you. Let's you build fury by defeating opponents up to a max of three gallons of fury. I never got this skill when I first played. Um, you're fighting a confused goth music student. It's a goth kid who thought the haunted conservatory was a cool place to learn how to play depressing music on the synth. He was wrong, and now he's angry because his mom won't be here to pick him up for hours, and he'll probably end up being late for work at Sparrow and get in trouble again. Gives you the evil eye, and then he gives you the rest of the evil alphabet. We got spooky damage. Let's smack him. Yeah. He tells you depressing stories about working in the food court at the mall. The stories hurt both your ears and soul. Let's lose all that. All right. Critical hit. Jiminy Christmas. Look at all that. Win the fight, you gain a whole bunch of all that. You're fighting a skeletal cat. The rear section of the conservatory appears to have been fenced off as a cemetery for the pets of the Spooky Raven family. It's kind of cute until he knows that many of the graves are open. And that there's a cat skeleton crouched on one of the gravestones, growling at you menacingly. That's not quite as cute. The cat mule is a forlorn mule. You shudder, and your knees start to knock together violently. I imagine that's a reference to the song Pet Cemetery. Pile of dusty animal bones. This is the pile of bones from an animal skeleton. Most of them look kind of smashed up, but whose fault is that, hmm? But there might be two, one or two good ones in there. Interesting. Confused goth music student. Yeah, okay. So it is It is now better for me to... Wow. Three bonus weapon damage from my fury. That's dope. I love that. Skeletal monkey. You stumble in the rear part of the conservatory, which also serves as the Spooky Raven Manor Pet Cemetery. You look around you warily, but everything is quiet and still. Until a skeletal monkey drops on your head with a... What the hell? Who keeps monkeys as pets? It jumps on your shoulder and pokes your eye with a bony finger. You lose eight hit points. Whoa! We needed that. That was a really clutch crit. Yeah, look at all that. Damn. Damn! Hell yeah! And we generated some health. Um, I'm gonna go to Cobb's Knob and I'm gonna go look for some more firecrackers. Oh. Alright. On the way to Cobb's Knob, you trip over something in the road. Stop to investigate. Turns out to be a chest full of meat. Some guys have all the luck and all the sub toes. 75 meat, but we lose a hit point. But that's okay. Fighting a Knob Goblin barbecue team. We've read these already. Oh, dang. Okay, cool. Because um, right now I am just looking for the firecrackers because I just need two more so I can finish out that quest. Um, I think I will leave this in this time, just, you know. Then again, I don't really think that I have that, that much to talk about. Um, that said, you can see that I am not burning anything to heal myself. I'm just using my regeneration to heal myself. And it actually isn't doing too bad. So yeah, um, back when I first played, I never used Fury. I don't know what it is, but when I was a kid, I was always afraid of using, like, permanent, I don't know, like, resources, I suppose. Like, because I always would just play very, very conservatively. Like, never use this item. Don't use this. Never, ever use it. Just don't, you know? Oh, we need one more firecracker. So, you know, just... Hey, I'm at the final boss. I've got 90 ethers in my pocket. Hey, all right. There we go. Captain of the Gord for a reward. Um, and so, in some cases, that would extend to, you know, combat stuff. And even things like uh, magic, you know, or, or resources that regenerate in battle. I just wouldn't like using them. And so in some cases, I would go out of my way to not even buy them to get the skills. Uh, and, you know, as a kid, that was just because I was afraid of stuff. Like, you know, can't, can't use my ethers. You can't buy ethers, you know. So let's head back to the guard tower. Or Gore Tower. Do you ever have the Urk Firecrackers? Give him those five. Great, great, says the captain of the guard. 
here, take take this as a, a reward. You approach the captain. If you er, bring me er, six more firecrackers, I'll give you er, another potion. Please, er, six firecrackers. Um, let me take a look at that. I think it's, yeah. This is a hollowed out gourd that contains a tiny fizzing orange liquid. Um, I'm going to find out what that does. And you know what? I may as well do it on camera. Can you tell I'm doing this one-handed? It's because for some reason I've decided to hold my microphone in my hand. Okay, that's all right. Can be obtained to the captain up, up to 21 times. Obtaining all 21 during a single hardcore session entitles you to Gord Core. So there's a thing, you might have actually seen this tab here. But something that you can do is in this game is when you beat it, you can actually go into New Game Plus. Yeah, let's go ahead. Cool. 30 strength and less. That's not bad at all. Um, yeah, so this game is nearly unique in MMOs in that it has a new game plus. Yeah, all right. What the hell? So, new game plus MMO. What that actually means is you play through, you know, it, it's, it's new game plus. You play through the same game, but you have, you know, skills from your last stuff. You have things that you brought in with you from your last time, but you can play through it as a different or a same class. But you also have other things, which are all mentioned on this page. Um, so there's, so these are special paths. Can you see this? Yeah. Oh, excuse me, I've got hiccups. But yeah, like you can't drink booze on this path. You can't uh, eat food and drink non-alcoholic stuff, and you can't drink anything. And they give you points, karma, essentially, that you then use to buy stuff in Valhalla. So then you buy stuff in Valhalla for bonus stuff. So just getting there is 11 karma, and you get more for doing these. Doing hardcore gives you even more more roar. And then there's a bunch of special unique challenge paths. So in some cases, you can actually play as unique characters. Like, for instance, you can actually play as the people mentioned here. You can play as Boris Jalsberg and Sneaky Pete. Um, so, and that's not, that's not even half of it. You can play as some of the bosses. Um... There's a mode where bees hate you, like all bees. I was looking at this. I think I'll, go, I'll come back and do this later whenever I have enough muscle to start doing more of the puzzles. Um, I'll get on the main quest next episode. I've decided. I will get on the main quest next episode, no matter what that entails. Hmm. It's a good game, everyone. I'm really liking sitting down and playing this. Um, yeah, I want to finish out this. Paper Towel Geist gets the jump on you. Paper Towel Geist wraps you up like a mummy and squeezes you like a boa constrictor. Which is to say it wraps you up like a mummy, wraps things up, and squeezes you like someone would squeeze, squeeze a boa constrictor. Anyway, it hurts. Critical hit. Oh, balls. Bonk it. Uh, ancient beer can tab poles. Interesting. Another one of these boys, huh? I should just pop off and do those, like, once every go. Four empty matchbooks. Demonic ice box. A dire fudge-sickle. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, as long as I bonk it enough. See, I actually, I'm full up on all of these, um, because I got, I got my 40 skills, and I was like, eh, that's okay. Uh, but honestly, I should, oh, by the way, Coca-Cola and Dyspepsi-Cola are MP restorers. So, then I don't have to rest and waste an adventure, but also it's a item that I use permanently. 
was going to go here. Uh, recent items. Dire Fudgesicle. It's a decent food. Long ago, this stop being a tasty confection made of frozen chocolatey goodness on a stick and became an abomination. Due to constant exposure to the evil environment inside the icebox, the chocolate became blood. Goodness became evilness. The stick? It's just a stick, I guess. Miscellaneous items. Let's take a look, actually. You pick through the animal bones and pull out everything that hasn't crumbled completely to dust. Turns out exactly zero of the bones exhibit that property. Bad luck. That implies to me that... Well... Hmm. Three beefiness. Yeah, what the hell. Do all these. Knob coffee, nice. Can I drink this? You lose two hit points, and we gain one drunkenness. Ah, well. Um, I'll do this on camera just just because. But if I go adventure while I'm falling down drunk, Coyote Ugly. You can't remember what happened during this adventure, but you're pretty sure it involves some hot knoll chick. Way to go, Tiger. The reason this is happening is because you had too much to drink. Later tonight, when you get your new adventures today, your drunkenness will wear off, and you'll, tomorrow you'll be able to adventure again normally. So if we just do this again. A pair of blurry old Orioles lie next to you, coalesces into a single Oriole that you recognize and speaks. Hey, how adventure? Looks like you had too much to drink. I'm sure you noticed that when you got this drunk, bad things started happening when you tried to go on adventures. This is the universe telling you to take it easy. Or you can tell the universe to... I know you're new in town, so I'll tell you what. This once, and I mean just this once, I'll give you a get out a drunk free card. Okay, that sounds that's sounds that's good. Seriously though, I'm only doing this once. The next time you get drunk, and the time after that, and all the times after that, you're on your own. Do you understand me? Yes, jeez, I get it. All right, Bor uh, Oriole pulls a bucket of ice water out from under his wing and douses you with it. As he flies away, he warns you this is the only time he's ever going to do this for you. These three hit points, or we lose a drunkenness. Like the bird when he when he wasn't so preachy. So I didn't know that would get me drunk. Oh well. Um, I guess I'll keep recording then. But yeah, if you uh want to get a bunch of adventures right quick, you can just get your forty, drink yourself into a blackout, and then just log out. And then the next day when you get your forty and your liver empties, you'll be good to go. All right. Back to the haunted kitchen. Possessed silverware drawer. It tends to fork at you, but he quickly bend all the times, rendering it harmless. That's funny. You find a wooden nickel. Are these actually giving me things, or is it just nothing? Huh, yeah. It looks like it's just giving me nothing. All right, that's okay. That's okay. See, if I wanted to, I could just drink all of this, or some amount of this. Maybe I'll do that at the end of the episode, just to top myself out. That reminds me. I want to go um, here, and I want to just kill a bunch of these. Popsicle sticks. I guess I shouldn't be grinding since I have limited adventures. What I was really trying to get is oranges to combine with my vodkas. Uh, I love screwdrivers because in addition to having a good, you know, balance of how quick you can get them uh, and how readily available they are, you also, oh dear, I'm about to sneeze, y'all. Um, they also increase your strength, I believe. Of course, I can't test that. Cook, oh wait, cocktails, here we go. Vodka, I've got 11 vodkas, dang. Orange, let's make some more. Two screwdrivers. Nice. So yeah, um, they give you more strength, which is you know, naturally what I need. Let's take a look at my equip, actually. Okay, so I got my bucket on my head, got my skull and bone, I got my crappy shield, I got my pants, got my hobo gloves, and regeneration. Oh yeah, um, I think that means with this regeneration and my one skill, I think I'm. Yeah, I'm getting um, one to three health back per adventure, which is pretty dope. All right. Let's see here. Chef's hat. 
What does the pale do for me? Oh, it's more damage absorption. That's right. Now that I'm actually using my mysticality, um, or using my muscle points, rather, putting on the chef's hat might not be terrible for me. Um, that's it. I just have a lot. Um, let me see here. Jaunty feather. Eh, whatever. Let's go sell some stuff. Get all those, all these, all these. I'll uh, I'll do the thing and I'll sell all but one. Mostly potions, none. So all but one. Because I want to keep a uh, not goblin scimitar on me. I don't think I need the tongs though. All right. You sell your knob goblin tongs to a crushed dwarf with a pair of pliers for 25 meat. All right. Um, let's look at my misc. What are these? Ready to snap for 15 adventures. Plus one mysticality stats per fight. Okay. Ready to snap. Your mind is brimming with sugar and ginger. There's no telling what they'll do next. Okay. Mouse How could 50s housewives be so scared of mice? They're so cute that even when you remove all their skin and muscles from an entire body, they're still cute. Little mouse skull buddy occasionally attacks adventures for you. Or enemies, I think. Really thick spine. What does this do? This is the kind of spine you'd make if Ashton Kutcher replaced your spine factory's regular mirrors with one house mirrors. What? <laughs> That's actually not bad. Uh, I do... In fact, require you grab an exacto knife, make as make as precise an incision as you can in your own back, and insert the extra spine. We get extra backbone. Next time you have to put your back in something, you have more back to put in it. It gives us plus five muscle. Wow! And plus one muscle stats per fight. Damn! In that case. Let's uh let's go off to the big mountains and let's go through here. Because now we got this. A mayonnaise wasp. You encounter a monster. The room is guarded by a mayonnaise wasp. Oily nastiness drips from its stinger. You get the jump on it. I'm sorry that I'm like so We bonk the hell out of it. Cute little mouse girl sniffs around looking for things to gnaw on. We win the fight. We get bonus strong. Nice. Bash it down. Forward? Yo, okay. Bash it down. Damn. Let's open it. Cool. Suntan lotion of monstrousness. I guess it'd be consumables and it'd probably be splitting that again. This is a sun. This is a bottle of enchanted suntan lotion. It'll increase your moxie by giving one attractive, even tan, no burning. Eh, why not? Gain some sarcasm. Um, I've never really found a reason to save swing items because even the ones that are like, you know, not really permanent are fine. Um, I don't really feel like doing the dungeon stuff right now, so I'm going to keep grinding on this. Oh, cool. He starts to serve you up with a side of fava beans and a nice Chianti. But he pointed out how overused that reference is. He gets a little miffed. Hell yeah, it is. That reference is in the Garfield movie. And I think the Chipmunks movie. Yeah, the mouse skull got him. Just a used band-aid. <laughs> she smashes a bone china serving powder over your head. Get it? Bone china? Um... Yeah, I have much less adventures than I usually would take the opportunity to grind with, which is bottle of pop skull. We got a Monty point, nice. Um, yeah, I usually if I'm if I'm gonna go off screen to grind something, I usually ensure that I have a bunch of bunch of ooh, moxie points. Actually, I should use those. Yeah, it's probably wiser.
Just a two-headed quarter. Hell yeah, two-headed quarter. So this is dope. Are you kidding me? Whatever. Um, yeah, I'm. What I'm trying to get at here is that I'm a little, not exactly against, but uh, I'm not really thinking about turning off the recording just because I don't want to. Oh god, I've still got the hiccups. I don't want to burn through all my adventures off screen and then no one sees it. Pack a handful of old soy sauce packets. Ooh, I'm playing dangerous. We got a corn holder. <laughs> what is a corn holder? <laughs> it's a melee weapon. <laughs> this is one of those little handle things you use to eat corn on the cob. Since you've only got one of them, though, you're probably going to live half years of corn. Or maybe you could hold the corn straight up instead of horizontally. But then you get butter all over your hand. Yeah, this sucks. It's a weapon. It's a one-handed utensil. Oh, so this is for the this is for the casters. Okay, our car has ten mysticality. Okay, I was I was a little excited, but my current weapon is better. I think skeleton bone. Yep, three to six. Well, five to ten. Now oh, let's try it. Let's go somewhere dumb. Bunny. Basically, sending your corn holder. Well. Whoa, that's not bad. Okay, okay. All right, I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that. Cool. Uh, let's turn all my bunny levers into food. Bunny levers, popsicle sticks. Nope. Popsicle sticks. So yeah, um, because your full your your stomach only has so much in it, you usually want to try to limit yourself. And while I'm here, let's actually go check out this. For the trainer. I think my smack skills only work with a, a club, and that's a utensil, not a club. Which is a little unfortunate. Yeah, I thought so. Okay. Um, I'll save this then. Actually, let's see what's in here. No, okay. Let's head on back to Spooky Raven. Okay, well, that's fine. I'm perfectly all right with that. Corn holder, hell yeah. My little mouse skull buddy is almost gone. Little mouse skull nibbles at your opponent's arm, really three damage, and you win the fight. Hell yeah. We got, yeah. We got the key. Thanks, mouse skull. You were a true hero. You managed to dig through a single drawer looking for the key, but the garbage disposal turns on, releasing a terrible, terrible smell. Drives you back in the hallway. Fortunately, you find the key in the last door you checked. And isn't that always the way? Yes, because why would you keep looking after you found it? Sheesh. So now, with our 25 adventures, we can go to the haunted library. So we can see here. Nope, we can search the haunted billiard rooms. You're fighting a pool torgeist, vaguely humanoid figure made up of a cloud of spooky levitating pool balls. Spend a few minutes trying to figure out the best place to kick it, but to no avail. Hovers towards you, eerily clicking and clacking. You get the jump on it. Nice. We acquire a five ball. This is an offhand item. It adds 8 hot damage and 8 damage to hot spells. This is a 5 ball, a blaze orange sphere. If you were going hunting and you were a juggler, this would be a good thing for both keeping you safe and entertained. Since you're neither of those things, you're going to have to use it to add a little extra oomph to your spells. Let's take a look at that, because I know that I'm not a caster. And I feel like playing dangerous anyway. 5 ball. Because if this adds 5 damage, I'm absolutely okay with giving up my crappy Bloodborne shield. Because the damage reduction is 3. I think, like, my pants are... Yeah, I'm I'm not too uh, upset about leaving those, so I'm going to add 10 damage to myself. Hell yeah. So let's take a look at that. Oh, you're fighting a chalk dust wraith as you approach one of the tables in the haunted billiards room. You're abruptly stopped by the side of what appears to be a bluish-white cloud of pure malevolence. It drifts towards you, ready to dry you up and blow you away. Gets the jump on you. It spouts a cloud of chalk dust into your eye, and it stings. You lose nine hit points. Cool. 
One damage. Oh, it's a ghost, of course. It takes half damage. It takes almost no damage from physical, but it takes a bunch of bonus damage from magical. Good, I'm glad I put that stuff on. <laughs> if I put my skeleton bone back on now, it might actually be a little better for me if I'm going to have to be fighting ghosts. Although ghosts might take less damage from spooky. By the way, yeah, the elements are so far that we've encountered are hot, cold, stench, and spooky. Poltergeist. Yeah, okay. So it does just add 8 damage. That's nice. That's fortunate. You walk into the haunted billiard room and look around. You see just about what you'd expect. Cobweb-covered pool table, cobweb-covered bar stools. Oh, hey, cobweb-covered rack of pool tools. And you help yourself to one. Let's take a look at that, because if that's a real weapon... Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is not, as you might expect, something that lets you know when it's time to go swimming. It's a polished wooden stick used to hit polished ivory balls and a polished leather pockets into the felt pool tables. Okay, you got me. The felt isn't polished. Yeah, that's why I didn't read it. No, it's because I'm dyslexic. It's a two-handed staff. Because <laughs> it, it adds moxie, but I'm not really using that. It adds pool skill, which I haven't really seen a, like a check for. And it would probably require me to give up my, uh, my ball. Yeah, thought so. Okay. Let's put my corn holder back on. Let's put my fireball back on. Doop, 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 doop. <laughs> Poltergeist it hits you on either side of your head with a pair of four balls. If only it had held four worse to give you some warning, you lose a whole bunch of hit points. Jiminy Christmas. Let's kick some ass. Eight ball. Let's take a look at that already. Oh, it's... So not here. Interesting. This is an eight ball. Not the magic one you're used to, just a regular eight ball. Like the kind you'd have if you stood 77 feet tall. If you'd rather be an infinity ball, just rotate it 90 degrees to the left or right. It weakens enemies very slightly. These I almost never use. Glob of spoiled mayo. <laughs> if there's one thing nastier than mayonnaise, it's mayonnaise later. <laughs> it gives you an effect called mayo and it deals sleaze damage every round. Handful of hand shock. This is a good thing. That this is a handful of weight hand shock, the kind pool players use to improve their shooting ability. Pool shooting, not like skeet shooting. They probably wouldn't hurt with that either. Whoa, it gives you pool skill, weapon damage plus three, and you never fumble. That's not bad. I'll hold on to this um, just in case I need it later. Well, there you go. While searching the haunted billiard room, you find a pool table. This in in itself isn't very surprising. There's two pool tables in this room, and they're difficult to miss. The surprising part is that a ghost materialized next to one of them. He's dressed in spats and sleeve gutters, and all the clothes in between them are high-class fashion. Or were, some hundreds of years ago. He knows you were looking at him, and gives you a sly grin, then gestures towards rack of pool cues, as if to challenge you to a game. You're ready to get cue. And then notice that your own cue is the ghost of a very expensive two-part mahogany and ivory job. His own cue, rather. You suddenly recall the few bits of fatherly wisdom your dad ever gave you. Never shoot pool against someone who brought their own cue. Sensing your hesitation, the ghost grins again and places a large, ornate brass key. A real one, not the ghost of one, on the edge of a pool table. Oh, can I? Damn. I was, gonna, I was hoping that I could put all my stuff on. You approach the table with a smirk, ready to show this ghost how a real expert plays pool. Line up your shot for the break with a bit of low English and ram the cue forward. Ball leaps off the table and straight through the ghost's hilarious facial expression, while your cue somehow ends up underneath the felt. In an effort to get it back without tearing the table any further, you somehow catch your foot on the lug at the table, fall over, bang your head on the ball return, and then your brain just gives up and you pass out for a while. Ghost is going to wake up, unsurprisingly. But at least you got some practice. Okay, now I seize it. Okay. Maybe I, uh, maybe I will put that cue on. <sighs> All right. That's okay. That's okay. Power through it. Oh, Jiminy Christmas. All right, guess we're going to go here and we're going to hibernate. Cripes. Okay. 
Back to the lab again. On smack. It performs an elaborate internal bank shot and a six ball rockets at you. It's too bad you don't have a pocket in your throat that wouldn't hurt nearly as much. Cool cue. Whoa! You deliver a serious wound to the tune of 14 plus 2 damage with your staff. You hope it doesn't get a staff infection. Actually, come to think of it, you hope it does. Boink, smack, wham, pow! We got a four ball. Whoa! Big stats. Let's take a look at the four ball. Add sleaze damage. Okay. So yeah, all these just add damage to various types. Lunch smack it. Oh boy, I forgot. This is the uh, this is the not good one. Let's use one of these. Yeah. Track over the table and throw the container and throw it at it. It gags and wretches, taking twenty damage. We got hand shock. Bam. Bam. All right, cool. Jeez, dude. This one's gonna be close. Sends tendrils of shock into your nostrils, causing you to sneeze violently. Oh. Nice. Nice and nice and nice. Okay. Um. Yeah, I'm going to. Huh. Well. Yeah, I'll just actually head back. Tries to envelop and suffocate you, but you can hold your breath for a long, long time. Oh, it fumbled! It drifts towards you, but accidentally falls towards a crack through the floor. How embarrassing. Nice. That doesn't make a skill. Pick a skill from the list. Oh, I'm out. Huh. <laughs> Oops. Cool. Handful of hand chalk. I'm really starting to run out of adventures, so I am going to rest my tent, though. Get a few of these back. All right. Back to the action. Sneeze violently. So yeah, if you're liking what you're seeing, this is what the game is. You know, whole, the whole thing. I'm going to use one of them hand shocks. My pool skill is at four. Oh, you can use more than one. That's not bad. Okay, cool. Yeah, that'll make sure that I uh, keep it on me. Pool cue it. Ooh, let's take a look at that. Seven ball. This is a seven ball, a sphere of deep maroon. Not quite the color purple, but the color of money. Provided you live somewhere that uses maroon money. Gives plus 5% meat for monsters. That's not bad, in case I need a grind. Okay. I just want to take a look. I don't think I have enough. No. I would have to grind, or I would have to sell some stuff. So, uh, why don't we take a look at that? I don't really want this. This has now been replaced. I'm not really going to need this. Oh, did I swell? Oh, I sold my sweatpants. Whatever. That's okay. Uh, and I think that's all. Sell them to an Argonaut for 85 meat. Got eight adventures left. Smack it. Smack it. Smack it. Oh, jeez. So something that you can actually do... Actually, I'll do that in a bit. Okay. Oh, we can practice. Interesting. Let's try it. You lean over the table, parrot and break, and then you lean a bit more and more, and gee, this feels nice and soft in your face, and when you wake up, the ghost is left. Oh, well, got some practice. Damn. Whatever. Chuck Dust Wraith. Man. So yeah, there is a lot of grinding in this game, and that's okay. Um, It's actually something that they changed in West of Loathing, which I may also play. Um, West of Loathing has a lot less combat in general, and a lot less grinding, really. 
Nice. It tries to send tendrils of chalk in your nostrils, but you quickly start breathing in the opposite direction. Skill. Yeah. Got a moxie. So yeah, you can see that all of our uh, stats are actually pretty high. We're still only level 6. It rolls a one ball at you, but the ball is too yellow to get near enough to hurt you. And that's everything. All right. So here's something that you can do. Consumables. We got three drunkenness. We're now at 17 out of 14. We got some fortitude. Let's just... You're way too drunk already. Okay, I thought so. Yeah, okay. So now we're way over it, but we got six adventures. And that's not actually worth anything, because we'll just go on drunkenness. But if we were to go here and rest in our tent, we'll regenerate our stuff. And actually, let's just do that a second time. Why not? You dream your teeth have fall out, and you put them in your pocket for safekeeping. Fortunately, when you wake up, you appear to have grown a new set. So yeah, um, now we have four adventures left still. But when we log in tomorrow, we're going to be empty of all our guts. So that's good. Um, so yeah, that's been an episode of Kingdom of Loathing. Um, very long, very side questy, uh, a running theme in my LPs. But uh, that's Kingdom of Loathing, baby. I hope you enjoyed watching. I hope you enjoyed having me on in the background. I hope to God that you aren't watching this as like, and this is the only thing that you're doing. You're, you know, you're active watching. You're taking notes because this is boring. This is really boring. Anyway. Uh, I've been Alfred. Thanks for coming by. Have a nice day.